Good evening. Thank you for being here. We begin this hour with a question. How do you feel about living on southern Vancouver Island? Is your life good? Is your lifestyle where you want it to be? The Vital Signs Community Report Card is out, and it has some of the answers, but it is not filled with straight A's. The high cost of living and chronic homelessness get failing grades. CTV's Andrew Johnson brings the report card home tonight, and he joins us live with what's in it. Andrew. Hudson, Vital Signs is released by the Victoria Foundation to give us a snapshot of what's going on. The good, the bad, and the ugly of living in one of Canada's most desirable cities. When 1,600 people who live in Greater Victoria, the majority women, were asked what they think are the most important issues facing the capital region, two stick out, the cost of living and homelessness. The cost of living, which impacts everybody, rose to the top where we've seen homelessness for the last four years. We'll start with how much it costs to live here. In 2011, a two-parent family with two kids needs to bring in more than $65,000 a year to pay for an adequate standard of living. But judging by rising child poverty, that's a target many families can't hit. The latest figures show more capital region kids are growing up in poverty and overall poverty rates are their highest in five years. In 2009, almost 29,000 families were struggling with a low income. Even those bringing home a much bigger paycheck will have trouble buying a home in Greater Victoria. Vital Signs graders give the region a D-plus based on these sobering statistics. A median income family needs to pay more than six times its annual income to buy an average house. That's much higher than the national average and isn't lost on Victoria City Hall. My father, who in, uh, invested in a house here in the 1940s for $6,000, and he was paid $6,000 a year. Well, try and find any place that's now recognized as affordable on one year of salary. Over the past year, the Greater Victoria Coalition to End Homelessness has housed 535 people, but advocates and lawmakers agree that's not enough. We have made some progress. I think we've seen that the issue of poverty and cost of living is impacting way more families, way more uh, Greater Victorians, and to me it's a, it's a cause for concern. At the council level, I think it's a greater investment in affordable housing. It has to be. So what do people living in Greater Victoria love about this place? Well, according to Vital Signs, it's the natural environment, the climate, air quality, and the walkability. If people love being outside, it makes sense then that obesity rates are dropping. Just under 13% of people 18 and up report being overweight. That's down from 2009 and very impressive compared to the rest of BC. And even though we have less police per capita than the rest of the province, crime in the capital region continues to fall. Property crime is down, traffic crime is way down, and the total crime rate is well below the provincial average. Finally, it seems we love our festivals and we're going to more concerts, way more. In 2005, just over half of us listened to live music. Last year, 85% tapped their toes or jumped up and down. Their vital signs look just fine. As said, not every indicator in the Vital Signs report is budging much. It'll come as disappointing news to those hoping to get people out of their cars and onto buses or bicycles. Greater Victorians appear to be staying the course when it comes to how they get to work and in terms of relying on their car. 48% of commuters in Greater Victoria drive alone in a vehicle, down slightly from last year, but up from the year before. All right, Andrew Johnson, thank you. You're welcome.